One thing to remember to keep in mind, top rail goes top of the mark. Middle rail goes middle of the mark. Huge discussion and debate right here. I'm gonna get into this here cooler and crack a nice cold one. Water, water of course. That's all we drink. So refreshing. We showed you how to set the post. So now we're gonna show you how to frame in, if I may, use these quotation finger thingies. We have a seven foot uh, chain link fence. Our wire that we're gonna be using is two by nine by 84. So we're gonna go ahead and terminate our tension wire here. With that, that's a, a seven gauge coil spring tension wire. Pretty dang hard to cut. But the trick there is, if you can actually score it, just put a little bit of a little bit of a cut in there, you can break it, just like anything else. Oh, hey, let's talk about these. If you are doing fence, or if you're going to be working on a fence, if you're going to be doing a lot of chain link, clines. We have found that clines are awesome. I've had this pair of nines for, oh, going on 10 years, I think. They never dole out. A lot of the other brands, they dole out really fast. They're about 50 bucks, but it's worth every penny that you spend on them. So we got our tension wire terminated here to our brace band, and we're gonna put it two inches above our grade mark. We're gonna suck it all the way down, and then that next brace band is gonna be for our truss rod, which is gonna be this. So the reason for the truss rod is we're gonna put it in here, from here to there. That's the strongest point in this post, is right there, anywhere closest to the ground. So we're gonna take this, we're gonna tighten that truss rod, and it's gonna take this post and shove it into that post through this brace rail. When we put tension on the fabric, Instead of that post wanting to buckle under the tension of the fabric, it's actually gonna strengthen because we have this as a backup support post for that post. And there's also gonna be a 20 foot double drive gate on these two four inch posts. We'll show you how to do that here after we get this done. I put the threads down there towards the brace band. I will come up here and I will overlap it on top of the, that thing right there is a truss rod tightener. And I will mark just right back behind that truss rod tightener so that way I know I have plenty of room for that bend. And now we'll bend it. What are we gonna use to bend it? Well, a truss rod bender, of course. This thingy. It's nice, compact, fits in your toolbox, and it gets us a really nice, tight bend. That way, when you put your tension on it, that your bend doesn't come undone and then you lose all your tension on your truss rod. We're gonna go just a little bit pass so we can't see that mark and we're going to take it and bend it all the way down back to itself so you have a really nice tight bend because there's it'd be really hard to undo that bend right there that's what we're looking for we're just going to turn that brace band you want to make sure you tighten up the brace band down there before you run up your nut, otherwise it'll just bring that brace brand higher and higher or make it crooked or various things. So we're just gonna tighten this up until we get a decent amount of tension on it. Once you feel like you got some decent tension on that, you're good. Geometry, shapes, sizes, triangles. So this is for that one person, or maybe there's gonna be more of you. Well, that's, that seems like a ridiculous tool. Why would you need that when I have two pieces of pipe? You're right, you're exactly right. So let's take this piece of truss rod and we're gonna take the two pieces of pipe and we're gonna compare the bend that we get with this compared to mine. Well, it's already trying to move on me. That is nowhere near as nice as that one. That's why 
I carry that with me. Cause that looks sloppy when that one looks nice and clean. You guys kind of saw how I struggled with that one. I just put my knee on it and transfer my, again, I get a nice clean bend every time. That's a well-designed tool and it's worth having. So now we're gonna go ahead and measure our brace rail and get it cut. Uh, so our overall measurement is 115 and a half. What we're gonna do is we're gonna subtract an inch and a half for each rail end. Now this thing, and this, this thing in Madui, these are both pressed steel rail ends. That is an inch and five eighths single hole pressed steel rail end. You're gonna use that to terminate the top rail and the brace rail in a single section where you don't have to use a truss rod. If you have to use a truss rod, you're gonna use one of these, only on one side, and you're gonna use it right there. This one is an inch and five eighths two hole rail end. So why it has two holes is because it's gonna hold the, uh, the truss rod tightener. It's gonna to hold together like that, just as it is right here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna subtract an inch and a half for each rail end. So an inch and a half here and an inch and a half on that side. And we're gonna get one twelve and a half. May I present to you the bandsaw. And we don't just put these wherever we want. We put them at the halfway mark. So um, on the line post, we're measuring down from the top 38 and a half inches. And on the terminal, we're measuring down 42 and a half. It's a different color, but it's still the exact same thing that Mark was using just the other day. Uh, he did a video on it and it's the exact same thing. Uh, I call it a chain walker. We're just gonna wrap it around that post there. Connect it to itself. So you pull the slack out of it. Now we're gonna use this little bad boy. We call it a T-handle. This part is meant to slide from end to end. Um, and we're, our wire is gonna go through here. So when you, when you use the T-handle, on any kind of a brace band, make sure to suck that nut down just a little bit because that nut will pop off and you gotta redo everything if you don't. So you wanna roll against the post. You see how we're kinda pulling that through here. Now we're gonna go back this way. Get that T-handle off. So what we were doing was getting the slack from here to here out so that when we let off of the chain walker that the tension wire wouldn't just be nice and loose and everything's going to be all nice and tight now. Again, you don't have, you don't have to cut all the way through, you just got to score it, then you can break it. So we're gonna put one brace band on first, and that's gonna be a blank. We're gonna do a rail end, and we're gonna do another rail end. And we are going to use our T-handle for the tension wire, and not the chain walker. If we put a chain walker on this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna stretch the wire all the way out, and then when we let off of that chain walker, it's just gonna be sitting there and be all nice and not very tight, be all nice and loose. You can only use a chain walker on a nice, decent long stretch. This section is only five or four feet long. And I already sucked that nut halfway down. So we're gonna fold that wire back towards the end of the T-handle. So we're gonna roll against that post. Now, if you go too tight, you will break it. So th there's, there's a fine line between uh, where you should stop and where you should keep going. I usually try to get about three wraps on the tension wire. You'd be just fine with just one because it's not going to go anywhere, but I just like to make sure that it won't come undone. So now we got to do another brace rail. Seventy-one and a quarter. So 
So he's gonna take away his three and get, give me 68 and a quarter. I'm short. Compared to what? Um, everybody else. One thing to remember to keep in mind, top rail goes top of the mark. Middle rail goes middle of the mark. Huge discussion and debate right here. There's our mark right there. So what that indicates is the top of that post, which the top rail is sitting on the top of that post. So the top rail needs to sit on the top of that mark. Now the middle rail goes middle of the mark. So if my mark is right here, it transfers over, goes here, middle of the rail. And then everything looks all nice and awesome. We just need to cut and terminate that top rail and then we'll be ready to go ahead and start running out some wire. While he does that, let's talk about some stuffs. Yeah, this, this right here. That is a top rail sleeve. That is an inch and five eighths top rail. On a chain link fence around a residence, your top rail is gonna be an inch and three eighths. Sometimes it can be an inch and five eighths. That is a sleeve to join the two top rails together. This thingy and this thingy. They're both the same size. This one right here is a brace band. Its purpose is tension wire or anything to do with framing. This one right here is only for terminating your chain link fabric. If you put your post in here, that comes off the center. Your chain link goes to one side. It doesn't come off the center. So that's how you can tell that that is a tension band because it has just a minimal offset. Brace band, tension band. So how can you use a truss rod right there and not right there? Let me explain. We don't have to have a truss rod here because it is only one section. So we're pulling tension from this post, from this post, and it's getting sucked together. So if we could just sit here and hold these two posts and pull them together, that's exactly what the tension, that's exactly what the chain link is doing. And this brace rail is keeping these two posts from sucking into each other. In order to use a truss rod, you need to have three sections or more. What I mean by that is this being a section, this being a section, and if this was my ending section right here, I could have a truss rod here because it's not a continuous brace rail. Sorry about that, I called into the office, had some, had an emergency. <laughs>